want to say is great win. Great win. Let's not talk about anything else but a great win. Great win on the road. We checked the box. Another step closer to getting this mission accomplished. What we all worked hard to get. 147 yards, one short of an all-time record for a true freshman at Notre Dame. It's Josh Adams. Woo! Numbers for contenders, and this team's a contender. Great job today. Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan, coming to you today from the Loftus Center, Notre Dame's indoor football practice facility. The Irish stayed right in the thick of the race for a national championship playoff spot with an impressive 42-30 win at Pitt, a game that was not as close as the final score indicated. It was again a complete team victory with another huge dose of next man in when freshman running back Josh Adams came in for an injured C.J. Proceis and ran for a career-high 147 yards while also taking a short toss in for a five-yard touchdown. I didn't expect to get the game ball. Like, to me, it was like I did something minor. I thought I was just, you know, contributing, you know, doing, doing uh, what I could, uh, you know, the little things. Uh, I gave it to my mom the frame because that's definitely something that, you know, you don't see every day. Coming up on Inside Notre Dame Football. Much more of an awareness of what the plays were, what we were going to be running. So our guys had a heightened awareness in that area. Since our relationship has grown, he understands that I can see the game pretty well when I'm out in the field. It doesn't take much for me to understand where my mistake was already. Well, I was a 13th winner. I tell everybody I've been unlucky ever since. <laughs> Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. No, he fakes and throws, and it's caught beautifully by Torrey Hunter, a brilliant stretching reception over the middle of the field. Now, you worked really hard in the week leading up to the pit game on your red zone offense, yeah. and it paid off four trips, four touchdowns. Yeah, we needed to really do a better job as a unit, not individually. It wasn't that we're uh, lacking playmakers in that area or not having the talent, but it, it seemed like there was something going wrong with uh, an individual, a play. So we spent this week working together as a unit, watching film together, talking through the plays. So there was, uh, I thought, much more of an awareness of what the plays were, what we were going to be running, so our guys had a heightened awareness in that area. Another remarkably productive and mistake-free performance by Deshaun Kaiser, who was responsible for 36 points in the game. That's second best ever in Notre Dame history. Yeah, amazing that we're talking about ever when it comes to a freshman quarterback at, at Notre Dame. And, you know, I thought it was just probably his most complete game. He did some really good things in the pocket, made some great checks in the run game, threw some great passes uh, on the day, and, and uh, was, a, was a pretty good show for, for a freshman quarterback. When you give your Tuesday scouting report to the media about the opposition, you often mention game wreckers. But is there any bigger game wrecker in the country than Will Fuller? I don't think so. I'd be hard pressed to find one right now. I mean, he is a guy that just can get the game turned uh, on its head immediately, and he certainly did that, you know, I think a minute and 21 seconds into the game. So his speed, his ability to track the football, one-on-one uh, -on -one matchups. Uh, Pittsburgh, you know, uh, is a, a very good defense, but they didn't feel like they needed a game plan for Will, and 
uh, they pay the price. This next man in thing is getting ridiculous. <laughs> I is. mean, you lose CJ, and Josh comes in and runs for an incredible career high 147 yards and scores a touchdown. You're against a really good defense, yeah. you know, a top 30 defense in the country, and he's just a tough kid to, to bring down. Um, he's wiry, uh, he's uh, elusive in a sense that uh, he keeps his legs moving, and after contact, you, you really have to bring him down. So it was good to see how him have some success. Zips one toward the end zone, intercepted. Matthias Farley snagged the ball that was underthrown in the direction of Jordan Whitehead. Matthias Farley comes in for the suspended Elijah Shoemate because of the targeting, and he wasn't perfect. But boy, he made plays again, led the team along with Jalen and tackles with seven gets a pick, and recovers in the second half a critical onside kick. Yeah, I mean, I love Matthias. He just, um, you know, he, he might make a mistake here or there, but um, he gets his hands on the football. He made a great, great interception, you know, to really turn around the momentum in the game. And, you know, he's just a consummate player, and, and that's why he's one of our captains, because when we need something to happen, he's usually around the football. Defensively overall, eight quarterback hurries, three sacks. You made things very uncomfortable for pick quarterback Nate Peter. Yeah, I mean, he was his lowest completion percentage of the year. You know, our problem still is, is giving up the big plays. You know, inexplicably, you know, we're giving up plays that we should not be giving up and we just got to keep coaching them uh, you know keep talking about how we can be a great defense because we can be it, it's just you know a play here or there that, that really concerns you that um, you know we need to eliminate but the pass rush is important because even before the season began you were publicly wondering where it was going to come from some of your critics believe this team was not going to have a pass rush you're getting a pass rush yeah Romeo had a nice day for us uh, Okora and of course, Sheldon Day has, has been very, very consistent for us week in and week out. But, uh, you know, Romeo had a good day in, in getting after the quarterback and the pressures that he brought were, were big for us. But, you know, again, we, we, we feel like we've been able to get pressure on the quarterback. He got out on some scrambles, which, you know, we got to do a better job in, in lane discipline. Pitt had 11 possessions where they actually ran plays, and your defense forced them into six punts and also got a pick. Yeah, and they couldn't run the football really with any great effectiveness because that's what they want to do they want to run the football and you know once we got up you know and got up 35 17 it was clear that you know the running game wasn't going to be part of of their solution and they had to throw the football and um, again I, I thought our defense was uh, at times very very good we just got to do it more consistently Back in the spring, Deshaun Kaiser was Notre Dame's number three quarterback. He was not getting a lot of snaps and was actually wondering if he had picked the right sport to play in college. Now, just seven months later, Kaiser is Notre Dame's starting quarterback. He has led the Irish to seven victories in eight games, twice throwing the winning touchdown pass with less than 209 left in a game, the first Notre Dame quarterback ever to do that in a single season. It has been a remarkably successful season for the young man from Toledo, and much of Kaiser's success is due to the great working relationship he has with head coach Brian Kelly. All your throws are a product of not getting your back foot down in the ground. So what you have to work is next time through is you're going to make sure that foot's in the ground. Like that time, you got your foot down, drilled it out there nicely. Last time we talked about your relationship with Brian Kelly and how he looked at you different the day before the Virginia game and then the day after the Virginia game. How has your guys' relationship evolved since then? It's, it's turned 180 degrees. He completely has... Uh, a new sense of confidence in me as a guy out there um, and, and we're able to you know talk uh, man to man about a lot of things and it, it's definitely helped us out a lot. I knew that once my opportunity to play was going to come that I was going to have to create a relationship with him and now we're to the point where when I come off from the sideline if unless I made some idiotic mistake which typically happens here and there and he chews me out a little bit um, we're able to just talk through the, the, the drive and talk through the touchdown or whatever the situation is for me to develop and, and to continue to, to make myself a better quarterback. Miles do bring pressure this time on Kaiser who just gets it away Diving attempt, intercepted. When you threw an interception or and you came over to the sideline, it was seemed to be a pretty calm conversation. You, should, you always got to keep the back and work, and work your back. Like you can't throw it out like that. Because you, you just can't. 
because he knew you were beating yourself up yeah. already. What are those conversations really like? We, we just like to talk about what I saw. Um, that, that's one thing that since our relationship has grown, he understands that I can see the game pretty well when I'm out in the field. It doesn't take much for me to understand where my mistake was already. So he allows me to explain myself and, and say exactly, you know, why did I make the throw that I made? Typically, uh, a, a guy comes off after a pick and, and the coach gets into him and, he, you know, you can't do that. And unless it's something where he had specifically told me not to do it and I go out and do it, we kind of avoid those situations. Whether if he's hot a little bit, he'll let me have it for a little and then we're able to, to quickly turn that switch off, prepare ourselves to, to develop for the next um, drive and, and just talk through things. And after Virginia, you talked about throwing the ball up and hoping. And that's not the case for you anymore. Talk, just, just explain to me the difference between the last drive against Virginia and the game-winning drive against Temple. You know, we've been in this situation quite a bit. Before, when we were playing against Virginia, it was more just execute what the coach was calling, and we came out on top in that way. Coming up to Temple, I had complete confidence in myself that if the play wasn't the best play for the situation, I was going to be able to check it. The game-winning touchdown was a, a run call, and they gave us an ugly look, and I, I had the ability and the confidence and the understanding that I can check into a max protection and, and try to find Will in a, in a weak spot in the coverage. Eyes are another long snap. He takes a look, fires to the end zone, receivers out there, touchdown, Notre Dame! Drops the time uh, when we need it in the fourth quarter, um, and, and so he's got the game ball, and that's Deshaun Cotton. Uh, Favorite musical group or artist? Fleetwood Mac. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? I love dogs, golden retrievers, mainly. What is your favorite spot at Notre Dame? Definitely the grotto. Player on the team most like you? Alex Bars. Get up early or sleep in? Sleep in for sure. Best nickname on the team and who has it? Mark the Barrel Harrell. Best player to room with on the road? Mike McGlinchey. One thing you always hear from Coach Heastan in practice that you can say in public? <laughs> Pass. Toughest player to block on the team? Sheldon Day. Best singer on the team? Ooh, Mike McClinchy. Best dancer on the team? Me. Best comedian on the team? Uh, Chase Homeshell. Best comedian on the coaching staff? Coach Booker. Best dresser on the team? Uh, Nick Martin. Worst dresser on the team? Uh, Ronnie Stanley. Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Man, I, I love all of it. <laughs> Steve Elmer, you've completed the 60-second drill on Inside Notre Dame Football. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. At 90 years young, Johnny Lujak is Notre Dame's oldest living Heisman Trophy winner. But his mind and his memories are still as sharp as when he helped lead the Irish to three national championships back in the 1940s. Lujak came back to campus for the Navy game this fall and took some time to visit with us to reminisce about his remarkable Hall of Fame Notre Dame career, a career that appropriately began for the Pittsburgh area native with a game at Pitt in 1943. photo of you. I think oh, that's gosh, before yeah. the war. Was this my freshman year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never saw this picture. Yeah. That is me. <laughs> the Adventures of Johnny Lujak, starring in person, the great All-American quarterback of the University of Notre Dame, Johnny Lujak. Our scene is the locker room of the Connellsville High School in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. The high school football team has just completed the last game of the season. Say, uh, have you decided on a college yet, Johnny? There's nothing to decide, Coach. I'm going to Notre Dame. I've decided that a long time ago. But uh, what about West Point? Well, that's quite an honor, Coach, but it's Notre Dame for me. Well, maybe you're right, Johnny. You can go a long ways at Notre Dame. And Frank Lay's a great coach. Frank Leahy. Oh, yeah. What do you remember about first meeting him? He was a tough coach. He was not tough, you know, yelling at you and stuff. He would come up to you and say, oh, lad. He always called everybody a lad. And, uh, oh, lad, that isn't the proper way that you conduct yourself on a football field. You've got to hit this man really hard. Get your shoulder in there and so forth. And then he'd say some kind words after he wanted you to kill this other guy. Yeah. <laughs> A young American who came up the hard way, 
the American way, who made his own breaks and capitalized upon each opportunity, who never whined for help nor bragged of his outstanding exploits. Well, first of all, let me go back to a story that you may not have heard. Now we're opening up in 43 against Pittsburgh. So an awful lot of people from Connellsville was in the stands watching me play my first game. And so Frank LaHaye goes to Bertelli. He says, Bert, uh, I'd like John Lujak to start this game in Pittsburgh because their hometown's 50 miles away. And Bertelli says, well, coach, that's up to you. If you don't care if they win or lose, go ahead and start them, you know. So things did not start well for me the first game. When Johnny came marching home, he and the service mates who joined him at Notre Dame under the great Frank Leahy put victory back into the Notre Dame victory march. Undefeated in 1946, they tied the awesome Army 11 that had run roughshod over Notre Dame's teams in the two previous seasons. In 1947, with Johnny Lujak at the pivot of the T formation, they were undefeated and untied and blasted a great Army team to defeat. Heisman Trophy. Oh, yeah. How did you find out about it? Well, I can tell you exactly. I never had in mind winning the Heisman Trophy. I mean, I just, everything that I did was, you know, Notre Dame and the team. So now we're playing the last game of the season out at Southern Cal. And so after the game is over, you know, I'm feeling, well, that's the end of my career at Notre Dame. How about that? And so then they tell me while I was in the locker room, you won the Heisman Trophy. But I said, well, what do I do now? I mean, do they send it to you or what? He said, no, you have to fly from here to New York. And I said, on a plane? But, oh, I was the 13th winner. I tell everybody I've been unlucky ever since. <laughs> Johnny Lujak, probably the most decorated football player in the history of that great sport. Listen. All-America's choice for All-American quarterback in 1946 and 1947. It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Jay Polston of Rochester, New York. Coach, how do you keep the team focused week to week and not looking down the road at things like the playoff rankings? If we prepare the right way and focus the, the, on, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays on our preparation, then, then we'll play well. And as long as we play well on Saturdays, um, that's really what we focus on. We don't talk about anything else other than preparation and if we stay with that we'll be in good shape next up for the irish who return to notre dame stadium for their final home game of the season a matchup with acc opponent wake forest on always emotional senior day we know what we need to do i mean this is a very stingy defense uh, ball control offense and it's like anything else you can lose any given week if you're not doing the things you're supposed to do so we got to pay attention to detail have a good week of practice it's our seniors last home game we want to send them out with a win uh, and go play the football that we know we're capable of playing and that will do it for this week's show. Coach Kelly and I will return next week to break down the Notre Dame Wake Forest game. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also sponsored by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Cadillac, Canon, Xfinity, Meyer, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, and UPS. 